Why does the National Center on RTI use the term levels of prevention instead of tiers when describing the RTI framework? The RTI Center has been asked uh, the question as to why we use the term levels of prevention in our essential components document um, as opposed to tiers of intervention. Um, I'm talking here about primary, secondary, tertiary. Uh, and um, you know, the, we're fairly early in the, um, across the country in implementing RTI models and approaches, and uh, we recognize that you know some states, districts, and schools have been at this for a while, and uh, other folks are just beginning. And as we develop the essential components document, we really wanted to capture, make sure that it captured um, all of the dimensions that um, and approaches and models um, that are being implemented across the country that have been used in research and that it would be kind of robust in its um, potential use and application. And, and one of the things that we observed is that in some of the existing RTI approaches out there that um, at the secondary level, for example, they might have multiple tiers of intervention. So it's not that the secondary level is just one single approach, but there might be multiple approaches. That is, that um, something might be first implemented um, as a secondary intervention, and if that uh, is not effective for a student, that is, if a student doesn't respond to that, there might be a second intervention that might be implemented, or even a third uh, intervention. In fact, I've heard of cases where there may be as many as six different interventions that might be attempted at the secondary level. So, so we really needed terminologies that both captured this notion of primary, which is normally thought of as core instruction, secondary, and then uh, for kids who really don't respond to secondary, which might be you know, small group instruction, um, tertiary, which sometimes might be uh, individual instruction, um, uh, clearly um, uh, very intensive instruction. and and. Um, and so the dilemma was, how do we deal with these multiple attempts within a level, uh, which we've, in our essential components document, referred to as tiers, and um, the primary, secondary, tertiary, which we've referred to as um, levels of uh, prevention. So, so um, there's clearly the need to do both. And um, I think at this stage, uh, we believe there was a critical need for also for an essential components document. Um, we circulated this widely, got a great deal of input, and I think generally people recognize the need for this, the distinction that I'm talking about. And, um, and it's some, it, in, in to some degree, it may be somewhat arbitrary as to whether you, you know, call one labels or you call one tiers, uh, but, but we kind of bit the bullet on this and referred to, um, and to my knowledge, um, didn't receive uh, um, any concern on the part of people that we refer to one as levels and one as tiers. I think everybody recognized it was critical that we differentiate between uh, between the the primary, secondary, tertiary, and the multiple the multiple attempts at intervention within any one of those uh, those levels. Um, we hope that over time, as people become familiar with um, this use of the terminology, that there will be more and more consistent use of the terminology, maybe less confusion. Uh, I think we see that's maybe one of the roles we can play as a national center is to help facilitate the adoption of, um, of uniform vocabulary um, and to some extent maybe uniform uh, definitions and conceptions of um, some of these really critical uh, aspects of the RTI framework.